Welcome back to Buffalo Times again. I'm Nancy Shade, and I'm here on West Hill in Craftsbury with a great craftsman, woodcarver, sculptor, Hugo Mesa. I like working and talking with all of these creative people that are finding at this time of COVID, when it's starting to increase again, COVID-19, on November 11th, Veterans Day. Um, Talking to creative people and doing creative things at this time is just such a blessing. If you can just start with a, anything, even just magnets, and start making something and working with your hands, and you'll find that the time will just fly by and it can be quiet for a while and you don't have to work with your computer or even the television. So it's, it's, I'm trying to interview people that can help us to enjoy the time that we have while we have it here. And I'm happy to be here with Hugo Mesa, who, and I want to learn about how he started as an artist and what inspired him and what brought him to be able to create all of these well-crafted pieces of artwork and um, with many different kinds of wood. And we met him, my husband and I, Sandy Hinson, met him at the Masonic um, Hall at a, di a, a dinner way back, maybe 25 years ago, in Craftsbury. Yeah. And, and so here we are again, and he is going to be a grandfather soon, which is very exciting. I mean, again, but this is, this is really a Vermont grandchild, right? That's right. <laughs> and so um, tell us a little bit how you got started and where you got started with being able to work with your hands and knowing that that was a direction for you? Uh, my whole thing started when I was, oh, maybe eight, nine years old. My dad had a, a coffee, a little coffee plantation in Colombia, where I'm from. Colombian coffee. Colombian coffee. Wonderful. And uh, the coffee plant is the most gorgeous thing I ever seen in my life as far as a, a plant is concerned. And the wood itself is beautiful. It looks like marble. How you, big does it get? How, how it, it gets maybe I mean, five, six feet high, the tree. And the, how wide is the, the trunk? The trunk can maybe two, three inches. That's about it. So a cane, for instance. Okay. And that's how I got started. No. With a cane. Oh, I didn't even know that. The reason for That's that is that the coffee, the plant grows up to a certain point, and then it spreads out Oh. on the top. Uh -huh. So when you look at it, there, it looks just like a cane, because it goes straight up, and then it has the curve. Wonderful. And I could pick the curve that I liked the most to do my cane. And I started with that, and I loved it. Well, how long does a coffee bush last? Long time. I don't know exactly how long, but... Kind of like olive yeah. trees. They yeah. just live for, yeah. for as long as... A yeah. long time. Yeah, long, long time. And what colors are they? Are the berries red or no, green? No, the, or... the, the leaves are dark, dark green, and they look like they're polished. They look like they're, you know, sprayed with the acrylic or something. And uh, after the... The first season of the tree, you know, when the tree gives the fruit, the coffee, the flowers are white, just like a like a, an orange tree, that white. So the hillsides are covered with covered white. with white white flowers. You know, the coffee. are they fragrant or not? They're just flowers. Flowers, but not necessarily like an orange flower. No, that smells. no, they're they're white, white, beautiful. And then little by little, it, they turn into green. They start dark, dark green when they first come out. And then as they grow, they turn a little yellow and a little orange. And then it gets real bright red, and that's when they take them. Oh, I thought but, that they yeah. got red at some and, point. And uh, coffee, the coffee plant is where I started carving. You know, I, my dad gave me a knife, which I still have. And I used to whittle, and you know, that's how it got going. 
Was it a pocket knife that opened, or was yeah, it a shit straight? Pocket knife, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was in the seminary when I was 12 years old. And uh, my mom decided to come to the United States, you know, bring the whole family over. And uh, I came and right after the, the seminary, so I didn't know English. I didn't have any friends. So I used my time that I had, which was a lot of it, to work, you know, to work in, in wood and metal and clay, and I worked with everything that you can think of. And I stayed with it, you know, all my life. That's, that's all I've done all my life, work with uh, different materials. And, and when you were working, um, where were you, in California? or? No, well, the, in the seminary, you stay in the seminary all year long, and then you come out for the summer or the Christmas vacation. Well, was the seminary in California? No, no, this is in South America. Oh, so you hadn't come to America No, yet. I hadn't. Right okay. after that, that's when I came here. So when, how long were you there, from 12 until... No, I was in, in South America. How long were you in the seminary? In this, from 12 to 17. That's a long time. Yeah. And that's where you started being able to work on wood. Right. Because it's a quiet and peaceful environment. Right. And everybody's working all the time. That's right. And it's a regular schedule, like you have a meal, you do your work, you have a meal, you do your work, right. and then you go to sleep. That's right. And that, so there's a lot of harmony in that, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. So did you do singing while you were there? Were there sing, was there any singing that you were required to do? In the seminary, oh yeah. A lot of praying, a lot of singing, yes. Wow. I've been studying about that lately. It's very interesting, yeah. the hours, the different hours where they go into the prayer yeah. and uh, all the vigil, and at night they do that. And oh, yeah. It's really, it's really a lot of harmony and peace. Oh, yeah. It, it, for me, you know, maybe that's why I am the way I am. You know, I, I love, I live quarantine, like I told you, mm -hmm. because I, I don't go anywhere. I, here I have all the materials, my work, my time, and I don't need to go out anywhere. And how do you decide what you want to do? I mean, these chairs that you've made, this is pretty novel, isn't it? I mean, I've never seen these no. before. And did you just think it up and yeah, just start yeah. making them? I just, you know, I, I, I got to keep doing new things. I got to do new stuff all the time. So you're inventing things. Right. Kind of, yeah. It is yeah. like inventing, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And there's, they're very comfortable. Yeah, they are. I mean, I they last sit, forever. I could sit here all day. <laughs> and even, you know, with a little laptop, you know how you can have a desktop that you can move off yeah. your knees? Yeah. And they're, they're really useful. Oh, yeah, I find, yeah, you can, if you have, if you just put them on your lap, I can do sketches while oh, I'm yeah. sitting there. Absolutely. And um, the older I get, <laughs> The, the more I appreciate that kind of yep. just being able to sit down and draw yep. where I am. Yep. But um, it's interesting how you have such a variety of work. And I think the sculpture and the carving, it's all relative. But how do you get inspired? What, how, do you, how do you know what you're going to do? Do you just sort of... I usually plan my day the day before. You do? Yeah. Okay. I usually say, well, okay, what am I going to do tomorrow? If I don't have a project going, you know, I, and I just come up with something, you know, just do something. There's plenty of materials around, plenty of wood, plenty of metal. Well, I noticed when I first, uh, when San uh, Sandy and I first came to visit you and Valerie that, um, and Corin, um, that there was a lot of wood in the barn. I remember you had a lot yeah. of beautiful oh, yeah. planks of wood. I, I sold it all. You sold it, was, it all? Yeah, it was... That was a trade that I made. You know, I, I used to make pipes, like I said, you know. And they're very intricate pipes. I, I'll show you afterwards what, what they look like. Okay. And... Uh, I did two pipes or three pipes to a guy in Oregon. He bought two pipes from me. And then one day he called me up and he said, Hugo, I got a bunch of exotic woods that I don't want to 
sell or give to anybody except you because of what you do. And, I, and he said, how about making me a pipe or a couple of pipes for the, for the wood? And I said, of course. This was all full here, full of wood. And I still have a little oh, bit. Oh, it was this building? Yeah, Okay. right here. This oh. was all full of wood. Oh, so now it's your gallery. Yeah, now it's my gallery. I still have some. Uh-huh. And the wood that I had was just unbelievable. I know, it was colorful. Unbelievable. From Russia, from everywhere, from Africa, from South America, from everywhere. And uh, it's all hard, 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 hard wood. Mm -hmm. And I did a bunch of things with it, but the tools that you need to work with that kind of wood, I didn't have most of the time. Are there little just, Dremels or? No, the, 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 the stuff is so hard. It, you know, you, it's almost like a tile, that wood. So you need electricity and to Electricity work and terrific tools, very expensive tools. Mm -hmm. and, so I did use some of it, but mm -hmm. it, sta it stayed in here for, God, 15 years without, you know, me using it a lot. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy that uh, was making a, um, a a recording studio here in town mm -hmm. that came to buy something from me, and I told him about the wood, and he got very interested in it, and I sold it. Good for you. Yep. And but you've made a lot of doors with that wood too, haven't you? Uh, some, not uh -huh. a lot. But not you some. you have many doors out there in the world. Oh yeah. Because the people like the carving that yeah. it's it really adds to their homes. Yeah. And I guess um, as we get older, I mean, it's harder for, for to get commissions sometimes. But you still have done a lot of work. And how often do you? I mean, do when you do open studio, you have a full house. People come and see yeah, everything. Yeah. But day to day, um, you're pretty far up here on West Hill. Uh, but do you get customers coming in on a Sometimes, regular basis? Sometimes, not all the time, you know, but I do. And yeah, they call you first. They call or, you know, I have a sign that I put a flag out. It's open. Yeah. Oh, so you put the yeah, open flag out. Yeah, I put an out. open sign, you know, and now with all this stuff that's going on, I... Haven't done much of it. But. None, none of us have. No. I so. mean, it's been that's true for a lot of people, yeah. and a lo and a lot of people are doing things online. I just, on my phone, I got something from uh, Square today about how to, they help you to put your website on and all your artwork. They have a template that, that you put your pictures or yeah. artwork yeah. on, and then you use the Square for the payments and the shipping and everything. Yeah. There's a lot to think about oh, yeah. when I, you're an artist today. It's a very I, different game. Yeah, I teach a little bit. You know, I, I give lessons to oh, some people. Oh, you do? People. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. That's a good Either thing to know. Either private or, or, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, and then... So when the COVID is over, you can, if people want to come and study with you... Oh, yeah. You could apprentice them, right? Absolutely. Because they could, they could really learn a lot oh, yeah, about... Yeah. The way I have it figured out is I, I supply the first set of chisels, beginner's uh -huh. chisels. They're small and, you know, they're all, you know, worthy of working with them. Right. And uh, I supply the wood and I teach them how to use it and, you know, go through the whole thing. Well, that's wonderful. And the thing is four or five weeks, uh, once a week. And after that, you come out. Carving. You, you should see some of the stuff that those kids do. It's like Amazing. an ap apprenticeship in a Amazing. way. Amazing. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. so they would just call and yeah, come in and do Yeah, they could call and come in and look around and see if they want to learn to carve. Yeah. Well, go on with your story about how you did finally continue um, when you came to America. Well... When I came here, I was 17, mm -hmm. and right off the seminary. And uh, in the seminary, everything was quiet and, you know, discipline and prayers and... Orderly. Or, you know, very, very strict and, you know. But when I landed here, I, I was totally lost. Totally lost. All I had was my family. My whole family was here. 
but I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any, I didn't know the language. I even joined the army at one point. So how long were you in the army? I was in the army for a year and they finally kicked me out because I couldn't speak the language. I couldn't speak the language enough. Yeah. You know, so, but uh, then, you know. There is a lot of order in the military. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be an artist, you have to be self-disciplined. And yeah. that's hard to do yeah. until you hook into that area where you're actually flying with yeah. it. It looks to me like you fly with it because you have a lot of work out here. We're sitting here but next to this big truck. I mean, that, that's pretty remarkable. Did you do the man inside and everything? Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. And uh, what kind of wood do you think that is? That is mahogany. That's a mahogany piece. How long ago did you do that? that? That's supposed to be for my daughter. That's my daughter's truck. Corinne. Corinne. She wanted so. a truck when I, you know, <laughs> I made some trucks for other people. Uh -huh. And when she saw them, I said, I want one. So that's hers. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> so maybe she'll have somebody who will want you to have it too. Well, that's play right. with it. Maybe she's going to have a little boy and it'll be a great present for them. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So art, art. tell me what art means for you. I mean, how, how, how did it start to pick up where you really made a commitment to do it for life? Well, uh, before I really started, you know, selling my work, I worked for a company that did a lot of decorative stuff. They did a lot of work for Vegas, Las Vegas, restaurants, and all kinds of different things. In California? In California. And I invented, they did stained glass. We did stained glass, too. Mm -hmm. But stained glass is so expensive, you know, very expensive. And I just had an idea of doing, coming up with something that it wasn't glass. Mm -hmm. But it looked like glass and... And it's sellable. And that's what that is over there. Oh, you did that lamp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And that is an acrylic and liquid color that you put chemicals to it and you harden it. Oh. And that's what you come up with. So your outdoor shower that's uh, is also that. You acrylic. made that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well. And what happened there was I invented that. <laughs> And well, you invented the plastic the, the, or the, the, the use of the process of the it. The process of okay. it. Okay. And how to simulate oh. stained glass. Uh huh. And uh, when I came up with that, I was still working for the, this man that did all this work. And somehow somebody told me, Hugo, go, go, go try to sell this stuff. And I had some samples that I took with me. And, uh, he sh I show the the stuff to the, per the 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 owner of the place, and when I finished with it, I came out with five restaurants. Ooh! And they were going to use them as dividers. You uh -huh. know the dividers between booths and yes, the restaurants yeah, and stuff. Sure. And the one that I uh, I got the five restaurants I got were Bob's Big Boy. And then it, it, I did some ceilings for them and. And the business just grew. I mean, it just. That's everybody that's wanted that's that. what we need today for this COVID. Right. We need to have separators, booths that have separators. Right. So and it would probably, if you train somebody to do that now, they'd probably be able to decorate, redo a yeah. lot of restaurants. Yeah. And uh, after that, you know, my my business just took off. And uh, in fact, I was audited four or five years later, after my business was going like crazy. Oh, scary. Because they, they, I somehow found out that I did those five restaurants and I didn't even have a license to go to work or to, to, do, to be in business. But thank God I didn't charge any tax. You know, I didn't charge any tax to the people that I sold them to. Is that and good that or bad? And that me. No, that, that you know, oh. what, they, what they check you for is to see if you charge tax and you didn't give it to the 
government. To the government. I see. So they checked the whole thing out, and they spent about a week there checking my house. And you didn't charge the tax anyway. I didn't charge tax. Thank God I did. Yeah. So you didn't have to make up. No, the I tax. didn't have to make up anything. Yeah. So. That's the hardest. Being an artist is kind of hard that yeah. way. But yeah. that's that's good. It worked out. But do you no, charge tax now? Oh yeah, of course. You do. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, after that, the business grew so bad, so 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 fast. And I, I'm not a businessman. I'm an artist. And I had to put up with the lawyers and the accountants and the IRS and the OSHA and and I spent my time just doing that kind of stuff that I didn't like. Imagine being president and yeah. having to do that. <laughs> And, uh, running whole country yeah, and crazy. being audited. Oh boy! And uh, I just got fed up with it, and I went to a home show, a restaurant show, in L.A. And I got a bunch of business, but right after that show, I said, "I'm getting out of this," and I did. And what I did sold you? Sold the business. Oh, you sold it. I sold it to my accountant. Good. Oh. <laughs> Who's not an artist. Who's not an artist. He so knew what was he, there. Uh, he knew he what was there. He knew what was there. So it, how, how did he run the business if he didn't have you there to... A month later, he went busted. Oh. He, didn't, he didn't know how to do it. Yeah. The people that I had working for me, I had 17 people working for me at one wow, point. Wow, that's a lot of people. Yeah. And they were mostly Mexican kids, you know. Yeah. And they're great workers. My God, they were great workers. They are great workers. And I had it organized so that, you know, they were happy and pleased with working with me. And since I spoke Spanish, you know, they, they were in great shape. But they used to have their own uh, kitchenette and stuff and they didn't want to spend any time in breaks they wanted a long lunch mm -hmm. so they can eat the way they do because they well, that's they Spanish really, I mean the yeah, Spanish they, people they, take they a don't long lunch never, you never see a Mexican eat a sandwich never it's always either beans or rice or meat or a real meal a real meal yeah. and they used to do that and uh, when I sold the business the accountant changed the whole thing you know, he put a clock, oh. a time clock, and so they you got to have breaks, and yeah. you got to do this and that. So he changed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the first kid that I hired didn't didn't like it at all, you know, and he quit. Mm -hmm. And all the rest of the Mexican kids follow him through, and the business just went kaput. And they were there because of you. Yeah. I mean, those yeah. young people were yeah. there. Yeah. And well, then I moved to Florida, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I did some a lot of work there. But I was working; I wasn't putting up with the government or you know all those other, other stuff. You were working mostly. That's probably where you worked on the doors. Right. I did mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of work there, and uh, I stayed there. But I hated that place so bad. And I started making pipes, serious pipes. You know, I was selling pipes for four or five thousand dollars a piece. Wow! And there were I'd show you pictures of them. And uh, would you do pipes again? No. Why? No, it's it's too intricate. The way I do them, it's too intricate. It, you know, I used to carve the whole thing. There was miniatures in it, and you know. But could I could I say at eighty? Wouldn't it be easier to do that than to do the larger things like the doors and the, these big plaques and mirrors and well, trucks? Well, the doors, <laughs> the, you know, I don't think I, I told mean, you, but the doors, I still make them once in a while. But three year, two years ago, a friend of mine from Lake Tahoe called me. He's a wood carver, too. He does different stuff than I do. And he said, you go look at this website. And I look at the website, and they're copying my doors. Oh, this is where they take the mold. The they, they make a mold from your carved doors. Yep. 
That's it, not very nice. And they're making a lot of foam, too. Okay, they, so that sort of discouraged you probably from oh, yeah. doing this anymore. The doors, yeah. I, I, if I don't do another door again, I, I'm fine. Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, from, I just want to keep from making here stuff, until 90. You know, <laughs> just whatever comes to my mind. The next 10 years. I mean, what are you thinking of working with? Anything specific? Oh, I want to do more of my collages, you know, my... The collages, I yeah. I want to do more sculpture. Yes. And my, wo my woodwork, I still, you know, would love to do some of it. I'd like to get back and do some more ceramics. Yeah. I like ceramics a lot. But you're, you're um, so these, these framed shadow box pieces with the figures in them are very expressive. And so you're going deeper into your expression yeah. as an yes. artist. Yes. And you need that depth right now. Absolutely. Oh, good. Okay. Absolutely. We're getting at the truth here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, the, I eventually want to have, oh, maybe eight to ten pieces like this. Mm -hmm. And they're all done with the immigrant in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you look at them, you can see there is a, an air to it. Yeah, I do. All sort of well, see, I, I see them. I see. Th I see people as pilgrims. Mm -hmm. You know, we're pilgrims on this earth. We're here for this little right. duration, and you know, part of it is hard. Part of it, light comes into our lives. Yeah. We just, it, it's never quite the same, and yeah. anything can happen any time that changes it. Yeah. And you've experienced that oh, yeah. directly. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I do remember when we were at what is now the Spa Gallery. It's in Barry. We were talking about it earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Being on the third floor, and it was before it was spa, and there was a big art exhibition on the third floor and a big party. I had a huge display there. You had a huge display there. Huge. It but was a whole wall full of stuff. I don't know how that ever came into being there. But I don't either. The, I, even I, the I, people at spa didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. I talked to them once and said, well, this was a gallery once. Yeah. Third floor, we had an art show yeah, up here. That's right. But I can't remember how that happened. I don't either. You know, it's been a while. It's been, what, 25 years? It'll come years. to you how it happened. Because yeah. I think one of you, somebody you knew, had a hand in that. And uh, I don't think, maybe Corin hadn't been born yet, but oh, she no, was Corinne about was to be. was born in Florida. She was born yeah. in Florida, yeah. okay. Oh, I think I know who, who, who it was. Yeah. My brother-in-law. It was your brother-in-law, the one in Florida. Yep. And then he passed that away. Was, yep. And then, so then the gallery shut down. Yep. And I guess it just was empty for a while. Would you like to take us into your studio? Absolutely. Absolutely. Studio is where he does his work. And sometimes it's fun to see the tools and get familiar with the space that if you are a student of his and working um, with him, that's where you would be working right. in the studio. Yeah, oh yeah. So it'll be fun to look at the studio and also your property with all the sculptures and everything around. I hope we get a chance to film that. So we'll move on to the studio now and see what you think of that. Thank you. You started out with a little knife that your father gave to you. Yes. And you end up with these beautiful tools. Oh, you have the knife here. I have the knife right here. Let's it, put it down with this group of things here. This is about, I don't know how old it is, but I'm 80 years old and he gave it to it's me when Swiss, I was 16. It's a Swiss. Yeah, it's got everything Army in it. knife. Yeah. The first ones that's they have. That's the first one. Wow, that's really a nice Starting knife. Starting with that. 
Isn't that remarkable? And you haven't worn it out. No. Because now you have all these gorgeous tools. Yep, i got plenty of those. So sometimes when you get up, it's just a matter of thinking, oh, I have to sharpen my tools today. Well, i got an easy way of sharpening them. What's easy about sharpening Let tools? Let me show you. you want, can I show you? Sure. See, what you do is you put a buffing wheel on a wheel, and you go like this. That's it. So even as you're working, if you need to sharpen it, you'll sharpen it. Oh yeah, just buff it up once and yeah. And this is a template. Yeah. So yeah. you put the template on the wood. You cut the wood, yeah. And you get the outer shape as this fish is. And here, then you start carving you start it. Start carving it. And then, this is an eagle, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, does this go somewhere for somebody? Yeah. So that is a job yeah, that you're doing that for another person. Yeah, that is something somebody wanted an eagle, and so I made him an eagle. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it'll take a while. Will you, you color this, or will you keep oh, it yeah. in raw wood? Oh, no, I, it's color. It'll be somewhere in there, you know. You know, the colors of the eagle, which is dark brown and white, you know, and yeah. It's funny, I've been working on eagles lately, too. Have you? Yeah. I love eagles. They just have appeared. I did a mural up at the auction box. Did you? Yeah, over her bathtub. She wanted the Willoughby Lake, and I, the, I, I just thought, what am I going to do here? So finally, I just put an eagle into yeah. it, flying, because... It's fun to do things that are lively like this, but I like the way the wing is turned forward. Yeah, it's the way, I don't know, I like the shape of this eagle because it's, it's, it's like it's going like this, you know. Just. Yeah, it's about to come down. But these, these little um, holders that you have here keep it steady. It's now. Steady, yeah. But do you have to, every time you do something like this, do you have to put the holders in? It depends it on what it is. It depends on yeah. what it is. But yeah. it's otherwise, it's really hard to hold it steadily. Isn't oh yeah, it? you gotta you gotta hold it for sure. So this is a sculpture relief. Right. Wow, you have a lot of work in here, Hugo, and a lot of tools, but it's in good order, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know where everything is. Yeah, I have to I have to clean shop right after I'm done every day. So you know where everything is. Everything is, is and. You don't have the to next waste morning time. I come in and I know where I don't feel discouraged to start when it's, you know, dirty and dusty. And when you have young people here, there's a table that's behind yeah, the camera is, right now. There is that table yeah. there that opens, see, it separates. Uh -huh. And you can, I had six kids, you know, six people oh, working on lot. the table. Yeah. Very good. And um, they do a fantastic job. They, uh -huh. I'm amazed. Just show them a little bit, you know, show like, them where the grain is. And... Is there anything that you can show us that you start them with? or? Yes. Let I'll me, wait let here me... while you get it. Okay. And just uh, tell Hugo that um, I really want to buy that chair I was just sitting in. Hugo. I'm sorry? I really want to buy that chair. You can take it with you and, and give me whatever, whenever, okay? <laughs> Can you hear him saying that? Well, then everybody heard it. So right now I'm going to give you a See, check. this is what I... You don't have to open my check, but I'm going to give this it to is, you. I supply the wood, Yeah. and they start with this, you know, and that's what they end up with. You know, and if you do this, and then a couple of other ones, you know, after that you can... Do anything you want. So Once te you know, the template is really important, oh, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. And that gets them started. Right. Because they get the drawing on there right. without having to go through all that drawing detail. Right. And then, you know, this particular tree has all the, all the turns and twists that you have to do when you carve. There's round portions. There's straight lines. There's all kinds of reliefs in that. And, you know, so it, 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 it's good for you to... And they learn how to use the tools. And they learn how to use the tools, sharpen them, and uh, the rest is up to them, you know. Yeah. Well, I love my chair. I'm calling <laughs> it my chair already because I'm going to give this to you. Don't open it. 
What's that? I'm that's I'm buying the chair from you. Okay. Oh <laughs> wow! Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so Why much. Why don't you want me to open it? Well, you can open it if you want. Okay. But it's you know we don't have to publicize that. But oh, <laughs> I told you different. I told you different. That's all right. Oh my God. That's all right because it's it's uh, sitting in it for that whole time. <laughs> clinched it for me. I really need Did that it? chair. Yeah, it's a great chair, and it has that nice uh, lamb's wool on it. And oh, it, 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 it's a nice, it really, you know, it's one of my favorites. It's a little yeah. small. I like it small. I don't know, small. it fits, it fits, yeah. it fits better. My house yeah. is a little small. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there, and you know how small oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. So, we've, this has been really fun, and for, for us to be able to come in and even see how you sharpen your tools and keep everything and you even have your glasses hanging in one place and everything, all your tools over here that you work with. So you, you really can right, go right to it, can't you? Oh, yeah. Boy, it's a and nice I love that nice sign space. that somebody gave me. My daughter gave me that. Keep thy shop and thy shop will keep thee. Did she make that up? No, Franklin did. Ben oh, Franklin. Ben Franklin. Whoa, I like yeah. Ben Franklin, don't yeah. you? <laughs> Absolutely. We used to go to the Franklin Institute. And, and it was really quite a place. It was in Philadelphia, uh, on the uh, square, on Logan yeah, Square. Yeah. And you could just go in and just look at all the science that goes on in the world oh, and the I inventions. Oh, interesting. It is. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been there. I've never been there. Have you been to Philadelphia? No. Oh, you would like Philadelphia. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful city. And it's all close. All of that is close. You can, ju you can go to the, you know, the Natural History Museum. All nearby and mm -hmm. everything. That's good. Yeah. You don't have to take the, the underground, whatever it is. No. Or... It's all right there. You just, the only underground you do is if you get it off at the Reading Terminal, you can have, they have a whole market down there that's ancient, and you can do your shopping there and then walk wow. underneath, underneath the uh, city hall and come out to North Broad, and when you're on North North, that's where the Academy of the Fine Arts is, where uh -huh. I went to school. Uh -huh. And you go down that parkway, Cherry Street, and you're right there at Ben huh. Franklin Institute, I'll and the Art know. Museum, and oh. Rodin Museum, and that's an education in itself. Wow. So I'm advertising Philadelphia, folks. <laughs> <laughs> For school, I too. It's a great education point. place. Yeah. It's not money like the New York is, and it's not politics the way Washington is. It's right there in between. Art. It's historic and it's art. And, yeah. You know, it's That's this, great. supposedly the city of brotherly love. It's kind of lost that title. Yes. <laughs> in the last couple yeah, of weeks. But hopefully it'll get back to it someday. <laughs> it, everything changes. Yeah, for so sure. we appreciate being able to be here with you and, and, and meeting Hugo Mesa out here in Craftsbury, Vermont. And we hope that um, in the future, You'll come on by and see what he's doing out here. The, the chairs are great and all of the work that he has on exhibition. And hopefully you'll be able to go deeper with, with your figures that you're yeah. making. And maybe, maybe people will be able to exhibit them for you. I'll try. We have a future. Right yes. now, it doesn't feel like you do. <laughs> None of us feel like we have a future. Exactly. But this will end, and we will move on. Yeah, well, you know, carving is a perfect thing for this kind of a time. It is. Because you, 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 you're quarantining, and that's the way I live. Yeah. You know, I'm right here 24 hours a day, or not 24, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. But you are going deeper with your work. Oh, we yes. look forward to seeing it, Hugo. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. See you again. <laughs>